Hello folks, and welcome back to the Vertigo Tea Party and a Let's Play Elder Scrolls Online. Yes, believe it or not, we're back. Uh, we'll talk more about why I'm back to playing in a little bit when we have a little bit of our sure to happen downtime running from one place to another. But let's actually just go ahead with our quest. I think when I left off, and it's been over a year, so forgive me, and actually I cheated a little bit watching my videos. But anyway, I think we we're going to do that quest to go to the mage guild hall, but I tried that several times and there's like a fight up there that you need to do or you have to pay money or get a skill to get the invitation and even though that the one Tamriel is live, apparently you need way better gear than I have to do it because those enemies kill me in about two to three shots. So maybe once we get some better gear or something, I might go back. But for the t meantime, let's go to do the main storyline quest, chasing shadows. So I had to actually look this up. As to where this was, I forgot where it'd been. But we need to go back to the Harborage or Harborage. Harborage? That sounds about right. But yeah, so Elder Scrolls Online is a game where you can purchase the game and then you can play it free, free to play forever. You can't access the DLCs and whatnot, obviously, but you can play the base game. You don't have to play a, pay a subscription fee, etc. So it's not free to play, it's what's called buy to play where you need to buy the base game, then you can play it. There is a subscription model. I'm gonna guess this is it, yep. There's a script subscription model that you can choose to do. It improves your experience gains by 10% across the board. So normal experience, crafting experience, things like that. Gives you access to a trade skill loot bag so that all the trade skill stuff can go into a separate container, which is by itself almost worth the extra money. You also automatically get all access to all DLCs while you are a subscriber, which is pretty neat. I think there's some other features as well. Oh, once a month, you also get... Uh, you also get... Uh, what was it? You get... Um, oh, the crown... Crowns, which is basically the in-game money that you have to usually buy with, with, like, real money. But you get 1,500 of those, I believe once every 30 days, which is pretty cool. That's honestly, that is probably, or this I should say, since I'm playing it right now, is probably my ideal setup. Buy the game, you get the pay to buy, get the game. This helps to cut down on spammers and whatnot. And you can play it free to play if you'd like, but if you want a few extra perks, you can pay. And the perks that you get aren't so huge that you're like, oh, well, you have to pay to get it or else you're inconvenienced so badly. The inconveniences seem to be fairly minor for the most part. Hopefully these guys don't mind me taking all this stuff. Obviously not because it's not stealing. That's one interesting thing that is is in this game that they did not have previously is stealing and you can kill NPCs and whatnot. I have not actually got into that. I've just been farting around mostly. I haven't really done anything too in-depth just yet but it'd be something I'd be interested in checking out eventually but I'd be curious what you guys if you guys are looking forward to seeing the rest of the series or what but uh, anyway I don't know and before we continue with this quest I don't know if I'm going to necessarily get this character to max which is 50 I believe we'll see again it tends, depends on how I'm liking it depends on what you guys are thinking etc but anyway let's talk to El Profito you are safe. Good fortune did not abandon us entirely. Despite many days of meditating and scrying, Sai Sahan's whereabouts still elude me. The projection that you witnessed in the Foundry of Woe showed him to be in great peril. If we are to find him, I will need your help, Bestage. Though Sai remains hidden from my sight, Lyris brings news that an agent of the enemy lurks in Davin's watch. Fear is on the lips of the people. Darkness walks among them. Even a blind man can sense it. It is the hand of Menemarko. If it is truly an agent of Menemarko's worm cult, it may provide us with a clue that will hasten our search. Seek this agent, but tread carefully. The worm cult is a cult of necromancy, and the undead are fearsome opponents. Venture to Davin's watch. Speak to Fedwira Loren at the market, or Okia the beggar. Lyris first heard murmurs of trouble lurking in the shadows from them. Locate this agent of evil. Return with any personal effects they carry with them. Oh, hey, sup, Lyris? 
My father taught me this song. Pretty, isn't it? I guess I'm feeling a little homesick. I like her. She seems cool. All right. We need to go talk to those people. Oh, oh okay. T cycles through quests. Interesting. I don't know why they don't just let you track multiple quests, but I think they were really trying to keep the UI as clean as possible. In some respects, I actually like that. I like a clean UI, but in others, I like to be able to see a lot of information when I need it. One of the big problems I have with the UI is the fact it does not show you an icon for buffs or debuffs. That's really bad to me. That's really, really bad. Like at least maybe you have it off by default, but give me an option. But I need icons for my buffs and my debuffs. And they say, oh, well, you can get around that by looking for visual effects, which, you know, is fine to an extent. But. Oh, I think that's some kind of crafting thing. All right. So is there an actual waypoint around here? I thought I could only travel to other waypoints. Where am I at? Oh, here I am. The little blue arrow. All right, so you said to head to Devon's Watch. Shit, lost myself again. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So we'll actually just run on over there. It's not that far. I did switch out my spells when I logged in. Everything had been reset skill-wise. Well, not my skill like experience, but my skill points, I should say, was reset. So I thought, eh, the pets were kind of boring. I felt like part of the problem was such an extremely limited skill set, which I'm sure is 100% not because of consoles, is it feels like if you choose something like a pet, where you basically just cast the pet and then you're done, it feels like it cut back severely on things that you can do as a player. Does that make sense? Like sp spells, abilities, etc. that you can use to to continue in combat. In my brain, this makes perfect sense, but I turn on auto looting too, because I get tired of having to hit R every time. Now I do have it set up too. Oh God, easy. There we go. I didn't take any damage, but I've got it set up. So now like I do basically a dot, go into lightning mode. I got my staff skill, Ooh, get my lightning skill. My dark magic. Just die. Here we go. Didn't work out quite as well as I'd wanted, but uh, let's let's actually go over my skills real fast. So in the first slot, we got crystal fragments. This has been enhanced or whatever. So it does damage and stuns it for two seconds. But the big nice thing about this one is casting any other magic ability has a 35% chance of causing your next crystal fragments to be instant, dealing 20% more damage and cost 50% less magicka. So generally I try not to cast that at all unless this procs. And again, because there's no spell icons, no buff icons, the only way to know is to look at your hands, which if you're in lightning form, that can be even harder to tell. There's also a noise apparently it makes. I haven't been able to tell, but anyway. So we also have a curse, curse enemy with a destructive rune, dealing 4,200 4, magic damage to the target and 1,952 to all other nearby enemies. So good for single target and DPS, sorta. Uh, you can also, you can only have one curse at a time. That's fine. Lightning form, you saw me go into that. Manifest yourself as pure lightning, zapping nearby enemies with electricity, dealing 332 shock damage every one second for 15 seconds. While in this form, you also gain Major Resolve and Major Ward, increasing your physical resistance and spell resistance, which is, you know, nice bonuses there. Focus all the elemental energies with your staff and blast enemy for 888 fire, damage, or uh, fire, cold, and shock, which is pretty nice, and that's my staff skill. Mage's Fury. Call down a lightning to strike it. Call down a lightning. Call down lightning to strike an enemy, dealing 1274. If the enemy falls to or below 20% health when within four seconds, an explosion deals an additional 4,500 damage. Shock damage to them and 823 to nearby enemies. So this is good when they're really close to 20%. Obviously, try to shock them and finish them off. For my ultimate, I've got Negate Magic. Create a globe of magical suppression, dispelling enemies placed at effects 
F- creates a globe of magic suppression, dispelling enemy placed effects instantly. Enemies within the globes are stunned for 8.5 seconds. Enemy players will be silenced rather than stunned. So the only reason I have that as my ultimate is because I think that's dark magic. And I wanted to get my dark magic higher because I did a little bit of reading ahead of time. And apparently dark magic is one of our big ones. So I want to get my dark magic up. My summoning is actually way higher than the other two. So we want to get that improved. Where the hell? Okay. What is this? Outlaw's Refuge. I'm wondering if that's not... Uh, that's not where we're going, right? No. Or if that's something to do with one of the, like, the Thieves Guild DLCs. Let's kill one of these randomly. See, now I see how it's got the spell effect on my hand. Boom, and that casts instantly. Pretty sweet. So yeah, it doesn't really feel like I've got a whole lot of... Um, attacks to be honest even without having the pet because number one I try to say well you can still kind of see that effect I mentioned it right at the end but even with lightning effect in fact it might be easier to see with lightning effect because the little glowing balls on your hand lol are easier to see this is not who we're looking for right oh yes it is I think Eel boy. no I want to look at this uh, oh Kia and Fiduri and Le. Oh, okay, yeah, this is one of them. Since the war began, the market has never been busier. Let me think. Ah, yes, Imperial Fellow. Tall, brusque, rather boorish. He pushed me while I was haggling at the market. Scurried off toward the east end of town when I tried to have words with him. Typical. You know what? Let's go out of that. So apparently, they're going to use persuade and stuff a lot. Because there's there's two skills that you can get in Fighter's Guild and Mage Guild. There's Persuasive Will, allows you to persuade NPCs in conversation, and Fighter's Guild is Intimidating Process, which allows you to intimidate. So let's go ahead and get those. I also realized I had 10 points. I've been kind of messing around with stuff. I didn't want to put points into stuff and then realize I hated it. So let's go ahead and just grab those, because obviously those are going to be very useful. Since the war began this is like the third or fourth time oh, I've noticed yes. that. Imperial Fellow, Tall, Bruff, you're very sweet to say that. He scurried off in the direction of the stables, if that's any help to you. And he was with another man. Deathly well, pill. don't judge him, Jesus. He gave me the chills that one did. Come on, it's the year of Antioch. Antioch? Wow, that would actually be worse, wouldn't it? Antioch? I don't know. I was trying to remember back to the Oblivion entra entrance when Jean-Luc Picard was all like, This is the year that I die. They paid me about $50,000 for 20 seconds of dialogue. That's not true. That's not true at all, I'm sure. They probably both did not pay him that much and probably was way more dialogue than that. In fact, I would say 100% more dialogue than that. I wasn't going to ask you for coin. I'm no beggar. I prefer to sleep out here where it's warm. Come to think of it, there was some out-of-towner mucking about in the abandoned stable last night. I didn't pry. None of my business. Also, he was armed. I'm no fool. See here, I had no idea the man was wanted by the authorities. He didn't... Wait. I remember now. He was with another man. What? Gone it's so judgmental. A ghost. They opened a storm cellar door near the stables. Do you think they were burgling the place? My God, people, get with the times. I'm gonna make this progressive. Where are we at? Hell, I don't even know. Ooh, crafting ritz. All right, uh, let's try to avoid. I'm probably gonna avoid the rune crafting stuff for a little while because I was reading and apparently that's one of the worst ones to level. And that's gotta say, what the? Gotta say that's one thing I don't like about this game is how they do trade skills. It feels like the best way to do trade skills is not by creating things, but it's like breaking stuff apart works better. It's so weird. Hey, what are you doing here? Looking all suspicious as hell. It's what I thought. Other player. But yeah, they, there were people were ever basically everybody was saying for the glyphs or enchanting or whatever it is. It's like, oh, don't bother making glyphs. Just break apart the ones that you find 
and trade with other players to break apart theirs because making them doesn't net you much. I'm like, that's ridiculous. That's ass backwards of how it crafting should work. Ridiculous. So I will probably not be wasting any more time with it. I'll probably break apart any glyphs that I find that I'm not going to use. But I'm also not joining a guild. That's another dumb thing that they haven't fixed. Is you have to be in a guild in order to use the auction house. Which I'm still blown away that they thought that was a good idea. That's a trap, obviously. Oh, that skeleton archer. I hope he sure doesn't come to life. Oh, no, he came to life. Nope. That was not quite fast enough, apparently. Nice. And I'm still kind of messing around, trying different things, like charging my staff to attack. I might have to turn up the effect sound just so I can hear this supposed noise that happens whenever that that one ability procs. What's it called? Crystal fragments. But apparently there's a distinct sound, which maybe their definition of distinct is a little different than mine. Okay, there it is. I don't think that actually worked, but it looked nice. I also forget about blocking. I don't remember what blocking really does for us. I mean, obviously, other than negating or cutting down on the amount of damage we take. Oh, maybe we were going up there. Oh, hey. What are you doing? Kind of caught me off guard there. Nice. That's got to give me a good rotation. Ah, it already dropped by the time I'd wanted to use it. Nice. Uh, let's do that, I guess. Yeah, he's my ultimate to stun them. Yeah, that's the thing is like I don't know. Maybe I like I put a bunch of points in in Magicka, but it still feels like I run out of Magicka like really fast. What? That hit? I feel like that was some bullshit there. I feel like I was well out of range. But yeah, it feels like you run out of magic so fast. But I guess you gain it back fast too. Let's see what we got in the bookshelf. Nice. Got my bows to three. That's always helpful. Well, that's rude. I'm gonna destroy that, because I don't like the look of it. I got the proc. Oh shit. Low in health. Yeah, wow. Okay. So we go back in. So I guess we have to block some. Guess we'll try that. Yeah, it's always one of the rough things about coming back to an MMO is trying to relearn everything. That's why if you've been gone from most MMOs for more than like a year or so, or if your memory's just exceptionally bad like mine, it's almost always better to just start all over. Ooh, eat that. Why is it jumping up and down? That's really annoying. I honestly have no idea what I'm taking damage from. Like, literally no clue. Alright. Let's try it again. Yeah, I, I, I honestly straight up no clue what I'm taking damage from. That lightning is mine, right? This, we're not going to go into lightning form. We're just going to do... We're going to fight it normal. I feel like lightning form might be total garbage. It feels like it kind of is. Uh, where is it? We don't really have anything else. We got overload. And our healing potions, I can't get them to actually work. Oh, come on. What? Why is it not bringing up my... There it goes. Thank you. 
count one. Yeah, let me kill that thing. Because the bouncing is just getting on my nerves. Oh, it makes him, like, freak out a little bit. Nice. Alright. Oh, whoops. Damn it, I gotta watch for that proc. If only there was a way to show buffs and stuff without... All right. I'll dem I'll demit whatever his name is. Hello, journal. I'll go through this, but I'm not gonna read it. Obviously, you guys can pause it if you want to read. So maybe that that little <laughs> that little uh, sigil or whatever the hell it's called, the official name for that. It was bouncing up and down freakishly. Was doing damage in an area because I took a lot less damage there. What is the meaning of this interruption? Hello. Why have you contacted me? Medieval Skype. This is Abner Thorn. The master and I are very busy. This had better be important. Wait a moment. I don't know your face. Identify yourself immediately. Yes, your report, you insipid twit. What, did you contact me by accident? Well, out with it. I don't have all day. Your disguise is terrible, by the way. You look like a character from a bad adventure novel. Thanks. Are they? I didn't think that Redguard has been had a single friend left. Not in this world, at any rate. Never fear. Sai Sahan is safely locked away. Even if they were to discover his location, attempting a rescue would be suicidal. Of course I do. But I'm not in the habit of revealing vital secrets to insipid lackeys. Now be gone. And if you contact me again without good reason, I shall contact your cell commander and have you properly thrashed for your ineptitude. All right, well, back to the harborage, I guess. Actually, no, we can just run there. Not very far. I keep forgetting it's right here. And I think it costs money to, like, in-game money, obviously, to teleport. Except unless you unless you do it from an actual waypoint, I believe. I don't know. Too many games, too many MMOs, can't keep all the rules straight. I don't need your damn rules. All right, we've already checked all that. I should have hit the traps on the way out, just to get hit by them. But yeah, we're definitely gonna have to relearn the combat and whatnot. But yeah, I feel like this combo isn't working too well. But like I say, the, I mean, the spell, the pets were really nice, but man... You talk about not having many abilities to use. Like, having a pet eat up one of your abilities is... When you've only got four, is pretty rough. I don't count the ultimate. Wow, oh, Jesus, it sounds like somebody died brutally, yikes. Hey, come on. Come on, you jackal. There we go. Eh, yeah, it's not gonna work. I was gonna take a little bit of a leg break and shortcut, but I think that will only end in its sadness. How the hell do I get out of here? Go the opposite way. Southwest. Then we'll go back around the trail. And wish we had a horse. Don't think we'll be getting one of those for a while. Yeah, I really, really don't understand the logic of hiding the auction house behind having to be in a guild. Of course, the natural reaction to that, people say, is, oh, well, just, just advertise and join a random crafting guild. But why? Why would I want to do that? Why should I have to join a guild to use an auction house? It's like the, just, it feels like one of those mechanics they came up with and they're like, okay, we really want to encourage people to group up and, you know, get with other players. How do we do that? All right, well, let's lock something that's typically available to everybody. Let's lock that so that you force them to group together. That seems like a really good idea. Like, no, it's really not. It's awfully a horrendously shitty way. That is not how to properly enhance or to encourage people to do groups. That is a very bad way to do that. I know that apparently guilds have to... One, one thing that I do think is interesting is apparently guilds have to... like, purchase or earn or, or something like that. 
they have to earn the right or ability to have an auction house available in a city. So you... Even on top, even if you're in a guild, it doesn't just mean you can sell. And by the way, anybody can buy from the auction house. I can buy all I want, but I can't sell. But one of the big problems for new players is getting money. One of the ways to get around that is to sell to other players. But at least you can buy. That's good. But yeah, to, to sell, you have to be in a guild and that guild has to have access to that auctioneer. I don't know if it's a, an exclusive thing. In other words, if Guild A has access to that auctioneer in Fantasia, I don't know if Guild B can also have it. Right? You know what I mean? Like I don't I don't I'm not 100 percent sure on that one. These refill. Profit. Put stuff back in these barrels so I can loot it and then completely ignore it. Hopefully trade skilled stuff. I probably will get a subscription just to get that. Trade skill back. What have you found? Abnathan shows his face again. I get the sense that he might have a larger part to play in the coming events, but for good or ill, I cannot say. You can tell me. With me, I shall be able to use it to locate Sai Sahan. Hold a moment. Come here. We need to talk. I heard you and the Prophet talking about Abner Tharn. Didn't the Prophet tell you the story of the Five Companions? I don't know where to start. There's so much to tell. We were chosen by Emperor Varen to join him on a quest to recover a lost artifact called the Amulet of Kings. The Five included Varen, myself, a Red Guard named Sai Sahan, Abner Tharn, and the traitor, Manamarco. You only know him as the man who killed you and stole your soul. But back then, he was Emperor Varen's most trusted advisor. It was Manamarco who convinced Varen to search for the Amulet of Kings. Varen wasn't a true dragonborn emperor. He didn't share Alessia's bloodline. Manamarco said the amulet could change all that. He said he could use it to perform a ritual that would turn Varen into a true Dragonborn. Well, the legend says that the Dragonfires were created from the blood of Akatosh and given to Saint Alessia. When a new Emperor is crowned, they're supposed to relight them to prove that they're a true heir of Alessia, one of the Dragonborn. It took us more than two years, but we finally recovered the amulet and returned to Cyrodiil to perform the ritual. Menemarko set us up. The ritual caused a violent explosion of magical energy. We lost Varen. Sai Sahan and I were declared outlaws. Menemarko convinced the Elder Council to recognize Abner Tharn's daughter Clivia as Empress Regent. But Menemarko was the true power behind the throne. Sai Sahan and I went into hiding. There was a bounty on our heads. Abner Tharn is Grand Chancellor of the Elder Council and chief advisor to his daughter, the Empress Regent. He is also Manimarko's toady. Tharn's first loyalty is to his family and the Empire, and he's a ruthless bastard when it comes to defending them. The Worm Cult obviously doesn't share those loyalties. Tharn would never trust them, but he's too much of a coward to betray them. Maybe. But what could we offer him? He's already got more gold than the gods themselves. I know it's a lot to take in. We'll talk more later. In the meantime, I'll keep an eye on the Prophet. Hopefully that orb will help him find out where Sai Sahan is being held. Once we know that, we can plan our next move. Nice. Are we leveled up? I think. Got another skill point that I know what to do with. I'm sure you can reset your skill points. I just don't know exactly where or how much. Achievement unlocked, chasing shadows. Nice. Anything else? Okay. So we got a level up. Um, uh, I thought we did. Oh, no, we didn't. We didn't. Okay. Uh, so lightning form went up one. There's nothing really too much else. 
Let's go ahead and look at some of our abilities. We'll go ahead and wrap up our first session back here. Uh, right after this, so I'm not going to do another quest. But um, I want to kind of tend to look, look at our abilities. And like I said, I'll make at least a few videos. And I've even considered... And this is something I've considered for multiple MMOs. And I've thought about this for several years now. I don't know if you guys have seen my DC Online series. But it's not a leveling series. It's more of a informational type thing. Like it talks about the different skill sets. It talks about the different currencies. It talks about the different types of missions you can do. Things like that. So I've always felt, in a nutshell, that MMOs should have like yearly, if not at least yearly videos updating people who are new to the game or returning players. So what I would like to do is for various MMOs like Elder Scrolls Online is go in, kind of play the game, get a character to max level, do some dungeons, do some PvP, figure out all the ins and outs of the games, and then go back and make some videos talking about the different aspects, the different classes, things of that nature, things that new players should know and updates for returning players who are, who are like me, who are coming back in after, after having been gone for a year or more. So that's one of the reasons I'm playing it as well. I, I said I was going to talk about that more as we were playing, but we actually went through a little quicker than I thought, and I kind of forgot. But yeah, because of the free weekend and because of the one Tamriel, I decided, you know what, I want to play this game again. So here we are. But anyway, let's look through the skills and we'll wrap this up. So I'd stop rambling on and on. Uh, reduce magicka cost, which is never bad. I mean, we've got nine skills. One percent is pretty shitty. Uh, One percent per light ar armor equipped, which I've only got four right now because I'm trying to have one of each type of armor, so all of those skills go up. Because my heavy, your, because your armor skills go up based on what you're wearing. If you're not wearing any heavy or medium armor, then you don't get any heavy or medium armor skill points. And even though I'll probably stick with light armor, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and get those leveled up as well. But anyway, 1% uh, per is pretty weak. Increase magic of recovery by 2% per. That's not too bad. Increase your spell resistance. Uh, let's go with recovery. Oh, we can actually do another one. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and do this one to evocation. All right, so now we have two per, so that should give us a decent amount more mana. Uh, this one I'm not going to worry too much about. Spell resistance, because I'm not doing any PvP crap. The other armor skills, not going to worry about, because I'm only going to have one piece of armor each, so not really something I care about. In case, that's just like a root, I think. Yeah, not really interested in that. Unholy knowledge reduces magic and stamina costs for all abilities by three. Yeah, sure, because we're having mana issues, so I want to pick up everything that's going to help us with that. Uh, rebate. When one of your summon creatures, well, we're not using any summon creatures, increases your health and stamina recovery by 10% when a Daedric summoning ability is slotted. Well, technically we have that, but health and stamina recovery I'm not overly concerned about. Energize. Increase your physical and shock damage by 3%. Actually, since we're using a lot of shock damage... I think every, see, almost everything we do is shock. No, this is magic damage. This is magic. This is shock. This is flame, cold, and shock. And this is shock. Eh. How many points? We've only got four points left. Destruction staff. We got trifocus. Grants bonus effect damage on the element used. While using a destructive staff heavy attack, which I think that's just the charge. I'll look at that before the next video. Uh, fully charged. Well, I'm using a flame staff right now. Fully charged flame heavy attacks deal 6% additional damage. Eh. That's all right, I guess. Penetrating magic allows your destructive staff spells to ignore 5% of enemy spell resistance. Eh. Proved hiding. Not that interested in right now. Soul shatter. If your health drops below 20%, your soul explodes, dealing 818 magic damage to nearby enemies. Allows you to revive once every two hours without spending a soul gem. If we keep dying, that might not be a bad idea. I uh, don't need any of these. I don't believe. I think this one's locked. Vampire Hunter is something or another. Undaunted. I think I've read that before. Was what's really crazy about it? Resourceful. Increase your match max magic by one. Again, it's fairly weak. 
When you drink a potion, you restore... Well, we can't even figure out how to drink those yet. Increase your max health by 3%. It's not awful. Uh, we got some tra trade skill stuff. I'm probably going to not do points in those, at least initially. But... Um, level 20 for that dark magic. So we're going to be getting some more unlocks here at level 20 for both lightning and dark. So I'll hold on those. Or I'll hold on to those skills in case I want to go that route but anyway thank you guys for watching hopefully you're interested in the return of this series uh, if you haven't actually seen any of these before i'll put a i should have put a card at the beginning of this one beginning of this video that links to the playlist so that you can start watching from the very beginning but anyway thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time